planting itself into video stores everywhere in 1995, Jeff Burr's Night of the Scarecrow delivers one of the best films in a horror subgenre long dominated by uninspired entries. The film stars Elizabeth Brandes, John Meese, Bruce Glover, Christy Harris, Gary Lockwood, Stephen Root, and Howard Swain as the titular Scarecrow. When a couple of drunk friends unwittingly release the spirit of a long-dead warlock, it possesses the body of a nearby scarecrow, which then goes on a bloody rampage through the town to take revenge on the descendants of the townsfolk who murdered him. The script for Night of the Scarecrow was written by Reed Steiner and Dan Mazur, and originally envisioned with a budget of five to six million through Corsair Pictures, a short-lived company headed by director Frank Perry. However, a few years of development hell would see producers Steve White and Barry Bernardi eventually purchase the script and turn around, where they began the business of getting the film made with a much more modest budget of $1.8 million through Republic Pictures, then owned by Aaron Spelling. During the long development, Steiner sold a spec script to Amblin Entertainment for a cool $750,000 and was unable to do the necessary rewrites to meet the needs of the newly lowered budget. So co-writer Mazur worked with Burr on trimming the grand scale of the original script, such as cutting a final act that took place in a very Terminator-esque and expensive factory setting. The original script also had the Scarecrow be a Freddy Krueger-esque quippy villain with many one-liners. Burr hated this idea and wanted the Scarecrow to not speak at all, which was at odds with what the producers wanted. He successfully got most of the one-liners removed, though a few humdingers that he hates to this day made it in at the producer's insistence. Well, hey there. The most famous killer scarecrow film is 1981's made-for-TV film, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. The producers had incredibly never heard of that film and refused to budge on changing the title, even though Burr noted how this would cause confusion with audiences. And Burr was right. To this day, if you Google Night of the Scarecrow, the first thing you'll see is the movie poster for Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, as well as the full cast listing of that film. Though the production itself was largely smooth sailing without too many problems, the film ran into considerable issues in post-production, as White and Bernardi, by this time in the midst of a dramatic falling out, refused to screen the film together. So everybody had different notes on how to improve the film, which made it difficult for Burr to please everyone. In addition, the company hired to do the CG effects was incredibly difficult to deal with, and just could not pull off what was asked for to the satisfaction of Burr. Eventually, White and Bernardi ended their partnership, on top of that, Republic Pictures changed leadership, and this caused the finished film to have nobody to go to bat for it, ultimately relegating it to video store shelves. A discussed plan to pair the film theatrically on an old-school double bill with Witchboard 2 never came to fruition, unfortunately. More proof that we're living in the worst timeline. The film is notable for having a ton of talent both in front and behind the camera. The film is edited exceptionally well by Bob Morosky, who would become most famous for being Sam Raimi's go-to film editor, including Raimi's original Spider-Man trilogy and most recently Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Morosky also would go on to win an Academy Award for Catherine Bigelow's The Hurt Locker. Stephen Root would end up being cast in news radio shortly after finishing this film and making him somewhat of a household name. Burr also had made quite a name for himself in the horror community, having helmed sequels to a number of popular horror franchises, including Stepfather 2, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, Pumpkinhead 2 Bloodwings, and Puppet Master 4 and 5. Burr's direction is on point throughout the film, with excellent camera shots that include gorgeous crane shots emphasizing the scarecrow, a wonderfully done first-person POV shot that introduces numerous characters, and tracking shots that amp up the atmosphere. Burr's direction gives the film a big-budget polish and a sheen of competency that is lacking in 99% of other Scarecrow films. And he's still doing stuff, recently working with Charles Band and Full Moon on a number of different projects. Because Night of the Scarecrow was fully financed up front, it allowed Burr the opportunity to have five weeks of pre-production, which gave him time to storyboard the entire movie. This is very apparent from the numerous death scenes in the film that are all pretty bloody and violent and have a definite polish and flow to them. In particular, Christy Harris's death scene, which involves her being impregnated by the seed of the scarecrow and having vines burst out of her body, only to be dragged down into the earth to her death. Harris, who was coming off her performance as BB in Night of the Demons 2 just a year earlier, was nervous to be dragged down into the soundstage, but pulled it off with gusto. It's a legitimately awesome death scene that very few horror fans have seen. Speaking of death, the scarecrow himself is quite the hoot. Even with the cheesy one-liners and the goofy voice, which Burr admits they, quote, never got the right sound for, unquote, my he's still a suitably fun slasher with a rad backstory. 
An extended olden days flashback tells the story of the warlock who turned the entire town into a giant debaucherous orgy before being killed off. According to Burr, the orgy sequence itself was supposed to be, quote, a veritable sea of flesh, unquote, with his main directive that there be no actresses with breast implants. However, come day of shoot, that sea of flesh never materialized, and he had to make do with whoever showed up that day, which included breast implants. They don't call it suspension of disbelief for nothing. According to Burr, there were never any plans for a sequel because it performed terribly, which is a total shame. The Scarecrow subgenre is filled with dozens upon dozens of terrible, awful, bad movies that only trade on the cool iconography associated with Scarecrows, but that are not made with any sort of passion or love. But not Night of the Scarecrow. I saw this film for the first time in the 90s when I was about 15 years old, and it's always been my favorite Scarecrow film. It's incredibly tough to find a copy of the film currently as it appears to be out of print. All of Films put out a Blu-ray a decade or so ago that contains an audio commentary track and a plethora of extras. If you try to buy it now, Amazon is going to make you fork over a lot of money. Somebody get me the rights to this film because I'd love to make a sequel. I live in Nebraska. The cornfields are literally outside and I have an entire idea fleshed out that I've had in my head since the mid-90s when I first saw this. I adore this movie, and it's been one of the many influences on my own films. I want to thank director Jeff Burr, who was gracious enough to answer a ton of questions that I threw at him uh, about this film and provide various stills and storyboards for use in this video. He's just as instrumental in making this video as I, and we both hope we can help spread the gospel of Night of the Scarecrow to a few more B-movie fans out there. Have you seen Night of the Scarecrow? What do you think? Comment down below. Thank you for listening to another installment of Forgotten Horrors. Next time, I'm going back into the past to discuss another great forgotten horror, 1971's Lady Frankenstein, starring the great Rosalba Neri. Until next time.